If you're over 30 and you're still trying to train the way you did when you were 15, or the way the 15-year-olds in your class do, you're not just making things harder, you're actually reducing your ability to reach your potential as an adult dancer. The truth is, your body has different physiological needs, different collagen, different fascia, different hormone levels, different proprioception. Or if you're hypermobile or have Ehlers-Danlos, completely different joint demands. So today I'm gonna to give you five biological non-negotiable that adult dancers must follow if you want longevity, stability, and progress, not pain, burnout, or wobble sick. And I'll give you specific drills and corrections for each section, including what to do if you're dealing with hypermobility or ehlers danlos because many of you have wrote to me saying that you're working twice as hard and still feeling unstable, and you deserve real answers and real solutions. Non-negotiable number one, active mobility and stability training over passive stretching. You're probably asking why this matters for adults. As we age, our collagen stiffens and our fascia loses elasticity. But for our hypermobile dancers, your fascia stretches like warm pizza dough and there's no natural recoil. This means two things. Passive stretching pulls on joints that are already unstable, while active mobility and strength through range stabilizes your joints through their full range of motion. The goal is no longer just passive flexibility, it's strength at full length. So here's three active drills you can add to your warm up to make sure that you're getting exactly what you need. Your dynamic hamstring opener. Bending forward, place your palms flat on the ground, ribs touching your thighs, and then stretch one leg and then the other, working up to 60 in order to mobilize your hamstrings. Here's why this works. It unloads your sciatic chain, which is your hamstrings from sticky to responsive, and improves your développe by releasing your hamstrings so your quadriceps can do their work. Drill number two is our 90-90 transitions. Sitting with both legs at 90 degrees, you're gonna transition from one side to the other, lift the front shin, come down. Transition from one side to the other, lift the front shin, come down. The goal is to try and lift that shin without leaning too much. Try to do eight total lifts, four on each side. This is gonna strengthen and mobilize your deep rotators and your hip flexors, build some end range control and external rotation, and help to connect that fascia for the hypermobile dancer. Our third drill is our standing hip car, our controlled articular rotation. Standing on one leg to improve proprioception, you're going to make sure that your big toe, your little toe, and your heel are planted in the ground, and you're going to slowly create a circle with your knee, working both outwards, and inwards, trying not to shift your weight or balance too much as you make that rotation. Do five circles in each direction on each leg. This teaches your nervous system where your safe range actually is while standing on one foot and building that awareness of your balance, conditions your capsular support for stability, and is essential for EDS dancers who lack passive joint feedback. Before we move on to non-negotiable number two, jump down in the comments and let me know which one of those drills you think is gonna help you the best. Non-negotiable number two, proprioception training, the balance fix. Why could balance matter for adults? Hmm. Starting around the age of 40, your proprioception, the tiny sensors in your joints and fascia actually start to dull. And if you're hypermobile, it happens even earlier because your joints don't give clear feedback. This is why you need to stop telling yourself that you're bad at turns. Your joints just need some recalibrating. Balance issues are not a weakness problem, they're a sensory system issue. For our first drill, it turns out you don't even need to be in the studio to make this work. All you need is your toothbrush. Stand on one leg, close your eyes, and brush your teeth 10 to 20 seconds at a time. Every 10 to 20 seconds, switch legs for two minutes total. Make sure you're getting those two minutes of brushing your teeth. This way we get fresh breath and better balance. Here's why it works. Eyes closed forces vestibular and proprioceptive connection. It rebuilds your deep stabilizers without strain and will strengthen your hypermobile ankles safely. Just make sure you've got a railing nearby in case you need to help yourself by holding on to something. Drill number two is our standing tilt test. First thing you're gonna do is kick off those shoes. We want feet connected into the ground for this one. Standing in parallel, placing your feet into the ground, weight on your big toe, little toe, and heel spread evenly through your foot. You're going to slightly bend your knees, close your eyes, and just shift your weight over to one side. And then shift to the other side. Shifting left to right, working on feeling the connection in your feet down through the floor, really focusing on what's going on in your legs and how that weight and balance is being shifted. If you want to progress this, you can stand on one foot and shift your weight forward and back, forward and back. Not letting your toes grip into the ground, but trying to maintain that stability through your whole foot as you work. Again, try for a minute to two minutes of this just to get that foot connection back into the ground and rebuild your proprioception. You're literally teaching your foot to read the floor again. Drill number three is working on our rotation of one leg while our other leg stays stable. So you can do this with a bar, or you can do this in center. Place your standing leg so that it's not overly turned out. 
rotate into coup de pied, arms in second. You're going to extend the leg out to the front, run the jambe to the side, and then come back in. Extend, run the jambe, and in. Do five of these on each leg, both from front to side and from back to side. For our hypermobile dancers, it's not about lifting the leg high. Stability is the objective here, not height of the leg. Have you tried any of these balance exercises before? Let me know. Our third non-negotiable is the recovery gap. Adult tendons need more time to recover. A teenager's collagen can recover in about 24 hours. Adult collagen, 48 to 72. And for our hypermobile dancers, when your fascia isn't stabilizing the joint, your muscles are doing all of the stabilizing, which means that every class you're doing is like double the workload. This is why you feel more fatigued, more sore. Your balance actually seems to feel worse the more classes you do. And it always seems like you're working twice as hard. It's not laziness, guys. It's just biomechanics. So here's my Athleticry Adult Dancer Recovery Blueprint. Rule number one, never jump on day four. If you're dancing three days in a row, day four needs to be light. Active recovery is great. Floor bar, Pilates, get out, maybe do some walking or some swimming. No Allegro and no leaps, and this is absolutely non-negotiable, guys. Rule number two, adopt the two to one ratio. For every two intense classes, do one session of mobility or stability only. This prevents overtraining and will actually protect your Achilles as well, which is one of the highest injury points for dancers over 40. Rule number three, micro recovery in every class. Between combinations, shake it out. Make sure that that blood flow is getting through the muscles. Between adagio sides, release your glutes and your hip flexors so that they're not too tight. And if you are going to jump, do some calf raises before you do. Not too many, just enough to ensure that your ankles are stable and ready to work and not stretched out. So what are you going to do to enhance your recovery? Let me know. Non-negotiable number four, the brain fix. Chunk your choreography. Here's why this matters, guys. Adults aren't bad at memory. They just don't memorize the same way that children do. Your neuroplasticity may be a little bit slower, but your pattern recognition is much improved, your rhythm mapping is stronger, and you're able to sequence better with visual anchors. Stop memorizing steps and start memorizing cues. Step one when learning the combination is gonna be sectional mapping. Break the combination into start shape, middle shape, and end shape. Adults memorize frames, not individual movements. Step number two, put everything to a musical cue. Music association is so important because it actually dictates your dancing. I don't know, maybe you read my quote the other day, but Music is like the harmonic resonance of the universe. And when you are dancing, you are literally harmonizing with existence. So stop fighting it and start connecting with your music. Pair each section of the choreography that you're learning with a musical cue. Think about the violin or the swell of the music on count five or maybe on the beat or the piano drop. This anchors choreography to auditory memory, which is incredibly strong in adults. Our third part of improving your memory for choreography is marking the combination with your eyes closed. Here's why this works. It shifts the combination into procedural memory. Closing your eyes separates you from all the distractions and reduces your fear of forgetting. And it creates automaticity, which means that you're going to have that automatic feeling of connection to the movement that you're doing. Visualizing the sequencing of your movement creates control. But let me know how it works for you. If you guys have anything specific that really helps you to learn choreography, drop it in the comments so others can learn as well. Our final and fifth non-negotiable for adult dancers is neutral spine, much more important than flat turnout. Forcing your turnout past what your body can handle is going to create lots of force in your knees, your tibia, and your ankles, and it's likely going to cause injuries. This is especially an issue for our adults because our pelvic mobility changes as we get older. And for our hypermobile dancers, it may be easy to fake turnout, but your joints might not be able to control it. Longevity means prioritizing hip socket alignment, sacroiliac stability, and knee tracking, not the illusion of 180 degree turnout. So here's how we find our safe range for turnout. Start by standing in parallel. You're going to rotate your legs while keeping your feet to the front. From there, you're going to pull your heel forward while you can still maintain the sensation of rotation at the back of your legs that you found while rotating. And then that is your safe range. Always make sure that you're pulling your heels forward and not moving toes back. We shouldn't have any gripping of the toes on the floor. And definitely stop if you feel that your pelvis is starting to shift towards an anterior tilt. For our hypermobile dancers, stop about five to 10 degrees before you hit that point. Your safe range is actually gonna be smaller, but will end up being more stable. Step number two is our wall alignment test. Stand with your back against the wall, rotate to your desired turnout position, keeping your pelvis and your back flat against the wall, plie, and then come back up. If you're finding that your knee is starting to go this way, it means that you've gone too far. Practice this three times while trying to maintain your body alignment straight up and down and making sure that your knees are tracking over your toes. Our last one is our rotation drill. So starting from our fifth position that we can maintain, we rotate the legs first, withdrawing the foot into coup de pied. 
Continue that rotation as you withdraw the leg up to retire. Maintain the rotation as you extend, and then gradually lower down to the floor. You can do that same thing to the side, rotate, continue the rotation, maintain, and close. And to the back, rotate, continue the rotation, maintain, and close. For this drill, aim to have as little pelvic shift as possible in each direction. Now, I want to speak directly to every dancer who said that their joints wobble, they fatigue twice as fast, and they get no support from their fascia. If you're hypermobile, here's the truth. Your fascia is not creating enough internal tension. Your joints move beyond the point where your brain gets reliable feedback. Your muscles struggle to stabilize everything, which is why you feel exhausted, shaky, and behind. But the truth is you're not weak, you're not doing it wrong, you're simply working without the natural scaffolding that others have. So we need to build strength and control while avoiding your kryptonite of passive stretching and overtraining. So here are three drills you can add into your warm-up or your training to help you to connect your proprioception and to connect your body to better be able to handle the demands of your ballet training. Number one, standing on one foot with your knee slightly bent, connect your weight into the ground, go towards your big toe, your heel, to the inside of the foot, and then to the outside of the foot. Big toe, heel, inside of the foot, outside of the foot. Do this five times on each foot, really working on connecting through the front, the back, the side, the side. And what that's going to do is stabilize your proprioception in your foot and connect the sensors from your feet up to your brain so that it's already ready to go when you step into class. We need to also stabilize our pelvis and we're gonna do that with some hip flexor work. So coming down to the ground, you're gonna put your feet out to the front, hands are gonna go by your knees, and you're gonna lift your legs off the ground if you can, or one leg at a time, and you're gonna work for 60 seconds. The goal here is to try and hold for as long as you can. So if you can hold this, you stay for as long as you can, and then you alternate for the rest of the 60 seconds. Start with a five second hold, and then build up and increase that over the time that you're training so that you're getting to that full 60 seconds of holding that l -sit. This is going to ensure that your pelvis and your hips and the connection between your legs when you're lifting your leg in développé is secure and stable and not working to an end range that maybe you can't control. Our last one is gonna be a short range knee bend with balance control in each direction. So you're going to bend, bringing your foot to the front, bringing it to the diagonal, bringing it out to the side, diagonal back, directly back, and then crossing over. Goal here is that short range of bend in parallel on your standing leg while challenging your balance as your leg moves in each direction. All of these exercises can be done with your eyes closed to increase the internal connection in your body. But as you're practicing, do what feels best for you and what keeps you as safe as possible. And let me know in the comments if these things help you and if you're able to improve using these moves. For hypermobile dancers, strength is gonna be super important. So even when you're able to, starting to work with some sort of weights or resistance is going to make a major difference in your dancing. Build the proprioception first, then get into a gym with a qualified professional who understands hypermobility and can help you to improve your strength. Ballet is good, but strength training is going to make sure that your ballet stays healthy, safe, and gives you the longevity you need. So I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Remember, you are not too old, you're not behind, and you're absolutely not broken. You just need the right manual for the body you have today, not the one you had at 15. And when you dance with biology and not ego, you'll dance better, feel safer, and enjoy ballet for longer. If you want structured training that supports everything you've learned today, jump down into my programs that I've got listed in the description. They're science-backed, designed for adult dancers, and will help you build technique that lasts for many years. As I'm sure you know, practice is the most important thing, and it does take many years. So keep going, because we have our whole lives ahead of us. See you on the next video.